So yes, we have 50 kilowatt stations like this and they're useful, but now that we have models like the Mark E, the Polestar 2, Volvo XC40 coming in to charge at 150 kilowatts, uh, what kind of charge session speeds and what kind of charging stations do we need to see to make that uh, a good stop? So welcome to another Coffee in Kilowatts, number five, unless I've inserted anything in before uh, this one goes live. So this is the Shell Recharge Station next to Logan Airport. We visited it in 2019, November, I think it was, because uh, it's one of the first that went live in the country. Since then, um, I've seen some people uh, showing stations out in uh, California that are being rebranded to um, shell recharge so that's that's interesting i think this uh, we may see more expansion once things get back underway in the us here and uh, i think we may start to see california become kind of the uh, epicenter of the shell recharge um, expansion effort we have a complimentary two stall 50 kilowatt shell recharge site here in boston and nothing is open so unfortunately coffee in kilowatts this week is really just the kilowatt we have no coffee but we do have face masks purell Wipes, so you know, stations online. What is the ideal charge stop when you're DC fast charging. Uh, that's going to be one of the topics here. So this isn't really about the charging, but it's always interesting to see what's happening on the GOM. This is, uh, as I say, 50 kilowatt station, putting out 42 kilowatts but to today, the car. The uh, goal is really to, whilst we're using these free chargers, talk about uh, kind of continuing on the um, price conversation about per minute and per kilowatt hour especially with electrify america recently announcing they will go to per kilowatt hour pricing quicker than the california mandate and also with the site here being uh, 50 kilowatts you know this is a bit slower this is back you know a few years now we're moving towards the expecting 150 and possibly up to 350 kilowatt stations to future proof so how fast should we be able to charge? Well, you know, there are extremes, of course. I'm happy with the Bolt EV in most circumstances. I do, you know, find that uh, being able to charge a little bit faster would be nice, but it's not the be all and end all of the car. Situations where I'm perfectly happy to be around for 45 minutes to an hour, uh, especially if I want to work or, you know, have a extended dinner break, something like that. Other times, admittedly, you know, you don't want to be around for more than that 20, 30 minutes, especially things like rest areas, uh, as we get more charging on, um, you know, at the interstate right off, there's not a whole lot to do. Usually you want to hop off, do your, you know, rest break, maybe grab a coffee and jump back uh, into the car. I find that tends to be around 15 to 20 minutes. I don't know, you know, other people might take a bit longer, linger. Other people might literally be the road warriors who want to get out, pee, get back in and, you know, on they go. So obviously, you know, Tesla folks, people who are in the more expensive non-Tesla EVs like a Taycan or an Audi e-tron will find anything that's in the Bolt or even the Kona electric or Nero EV, you know, just unbearable. That's not going to be something that they will live with. Um, and they've paid, you know, for the privilege of having a car that charges much faster than that. So you're, you know, essentially in a Tesla, you're talking 15 to 20 minute uh, breaks. And I think, I mean, for me, that is, that's the sweet spot. You know, it's, I'd actually be willing to wait in the 20 to 30 minute rate um, period, just because the stuff, you know, having a family, maybe taking the dog, um, just anything that you want to do is it takes 15 to 20 minutes and you know having to wait that extra few minutes you when you get back to the car you can plan your route your next stop you can you know wipe down the windows you can clean the car up after the road trip mess which uh, anyone with kids will be <laughs> perfectly familiar with um so there's there's a number of things and i don't think the the five minutes that you would add there, five to 10 minutes is really that substantial. Um, obviously the other end of the spectrum is, you know, the people who say, well, if it's not as quick as a gas stop, uh, I don't want to know. I don't think we're very close to that necessarily, but again, you know, I don't think we have to convince those people right now. That's going to be something that's further down the line when EVs eventually surpass, you know, gas uh, cars in terms of both range and charging speed, uh, refueling speed. 
but you know the next group to to win over is the people who you know are in the middle and say well how long you know what kind of inconvenience am i going to see from an electric vehicle when i'm charging it on my long trips you know reality that uh, most people charge at home that you know the vast majority of miles and journeys are done in your local area that doesn't really matter at least you know here in america um, it's people need to feel that their car can do it all that it's going to be able to take the long trip when they want to that it's not going to hold them back um, on the road that if they want to charge slowly they can that's fine destination charging overnight stop that kind of thing but also if they want to just literally get off get back on the road as quickly as possible what's the inconvenience to me there that's where the marquee comes in it's talking about the upgraded um, charge speed which I think they were always supposed to be in the 120 to 150 kilowatt range depending on the model you choose um, but that'll come later as the specs get announced um, but we were talking about um, around 61 miles uh, every 10 minutes which obviously extrapolating out starts to become 183 miles in half an hour compared to the Bolt's best case scenario, which is somewhere between 100 and 110 miles, you know, that becomes quite a significant um, bump up. So, you know, to me that becomes ideal. That's, you know, almost gonna be too fast in some places because, you know, my by the time my family has got out, done all the stuff, got their snacks, got ready, where the car will be ready to go. You know, you can hop to the next charger on that 55, 60% in the 2020 Bolt, but, um, to get a bit further you'd need to get uh, another 10-15 minutes at least and that's where it starts to become you're sitting around the car you know wasting your time depends on what you're doing in that time what if you're working what if you're connecting with someone taking a phone call sending an email any of these things could be you know classed as productive time really but, but I think as we get down to this you know even in a model that's coming up relatively soon you know the mach -E should be available later this year certainly on mass by uh, this time next year you would hope at that point you know you've got a non-tesla EV in the similar kind of price range after the federal tax credit um, of that low 40,000 to, to mid 40,000 range that can add um, you know a full two or three hours driving within half an hour um, you're at a good speed. For me, that's perfectly acceptable. You know, that would be a considerable upgrade over the Bolt EV. But for other people who are first-time EV buyers, I think the mix of that, you know, plus the uh, performance, the tech, the just everything that comes with uh, an electric vehicle, you know, quiet running, um, efficiency, being able to charge at home, you start to weigh all that stuff up, plus the you know um quicker charging and the the downside is down here now it's you know well maybe you have to spend 10 minutes extra per stop to uh to be charging well that you know unless you're again getting into those really long road trips that becomes almost you know a wash who really cares that you know 10 minutes here or there is a throwaway kind of uh, time so if we start to push down underneath 30 minutes we're getting very close to that already, you know, just within the models that are coming out in the next uh, year, 12 to 18 months. Okay, so we'll have to look at the time again, but the reason I wanted to go for a little walk there was about half an hour, I would say, um, 30 minutes. Um, and that is almost up to the 55% taper. We should see that go down in a sec. So that would be about the time you want to uh, leave in a Bolt EV, 25, 30 minutes, get back to the car and get that bump up to 50, 55%, maybe 60% just to give yourself you know, closer to 150 miles. So there we go, just for completeness, we're well past the taper points now, tapering down to a neat 30 kilowatts almost, and at 72%. On a faster station, we probably would be now up to about 200 miles in 50, 55 minutes coming up.
So what do you think? Is uh, the Ford mach -E the first of uh, many models to come that will essentially wash out that advantage of uh, refueling quickly with gas and make most people think it's uh, a wash really with stopping and uh, just charging up whilst we do the rest activities and replacing that with refueling after the rest activities? I can take that, you know, 20, 30 minutes, no problem per stop. Or do we have another iteration of... Um, you know vehicles to go do we still have to pay way too much to get a vehicle that charges uh, an acceptable speed and electrical vehicles will always be in this kind of yes but it doesn't charge fast enough um, on a road trip category until we get past the 150 kilowatt uh, charging mark as we move into this next wave of 300 mile you know 125 to 150 kilowatt um, charging rate EVs Will that be enough, in your opinion, to uh, to kind of bring a whole new slew of people over to the EV side, such as it is? Let me know. That's the point of coffee and kilowatts, even without coffee. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, as always. Uh, keep your hands sanitized, and, uh, and see you in the next one. Cheers.